Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and coffee. Oh, and my cousin. <laughs> There's my cousin Debbie. She made me this mug. I love it. Today we're going to make some face masks. Now, I want to read this. This is off the pattern. It says, this face mask is designed by so much more in store. Free pattern. Printed it off her site. I will link it below. The face mask is not ASTM compliant, N95 masks, surgical masks, or medical masks. Nor does so much more in store represent these masks will resist the COVID-19 virus. This is just to help you, A, not spread... And it's, you know, what the CDC is recommending that we wear. So, I printed this pattern. I think there's a way. I'm not going to make this one with a filter pocket because I don't really have anything to filter. So, we're just going to make it out of what I have. But I do have this fusible fleece. I have no idea what this is going to do. Safety-wise. But it's another layer. So we're going to try with that, which is not in these directions, and you don't have to have it. I just happen to have it, so we're going to use it. Um, so what this is, and like I said, it's a free PDF. It gives you some written directions, but it has the patterns. And it comes with uh, one, two, four sizes, like down to little itty bitties. We're going to make this large size because I think that will fit my head. Now, while cleaning my basement yesterday, I came across two packages. This is three-eighths inch. Oh, and it says quarter inch or three-eighths elastic, seven inch pieces. And I have six yards, 12 yards of it. So I'll be able to make a fair amount with the elastic. If you don't, if you have ribbon, you can use ribbon. If you have t-shirts, you can cut t-shirts and strips. It will not fray. You just stretch it and it makes a band. Um, you could cut one, I guess, to go around your ear. But if I was using t-shirt, I would probably do the ties. Um, but this is your pattern. We're going to take some scissors, non-fabric scissors, if you have them. And we're going to cut this pattern out just like this, and then we're gonna use this pattern to cut out all of our fabric and fleece. And I went through my scraps just to see what I had, and this is where I've come. Now, I used to make, can I still do make bags? So this fabric here already has the fleece attached. I just have to like, you know, re-iron re it down. So we're going to try this fabric on the outside so I can make some of those. And then I have some of this I Love New York um, fabric that already has it. Plus I have some liner, a piece of liner already cut out. So we'll see what we come up with. And I'll show you how I cut it and iron it. But for now, I need to cut this pattern out. And I need to get my materials together and figure out what the next step is. I want to read the directions. I know these markers here are for the um, elastic, where the elastic will get attached. I need to cut my seven inches. And here it says if you're using binding, um, so the binding would go, you know, maybe all the way up and around, or ties. It says it's 17 inches. You can cut your ties as long as you want. I would say 17 inches, stitch them here, and then that'll give you plenty of room to um, tie them on. This is very, very customizable. So let's get started. Okay. First one I'm going to cut out and try is the one that has the fleece already attached. And if you have any type of um, interfacing, I think that it would just be the same. And all it is is just an extra layer. So this, first of all, is one piece, but it's a directional fabric. There's definitely a top and a bottom. Now what that is, is up to you. But what I'm doing, I'm going to cut it this way. So put the wrong sides together. So when I open it up, they'll both be in the same direction. That really only matters to me because I'm me and also if it's directional fabric. The other thing I would say is I'm not putting holes 
here. I'm going to take my pin so I can cut it, but I'm going to try to stick to the seam allowance portion out here just because, again, I mean, there's just extra why not at this point. Anything we can do will help. So I'm pinning it in the seam allowance. Um, now, this was already attached, like I said, to the fleece. However, I think that might be the best way. Cutting fleece fussy like this, and this will be considered fussy in my life, and trying to get it to not ruin your iron or your ironing board because there is adhesive on the back of this fleece. I would say do what I've done, even though I didn't do it for this reason. I would take a size of fabric and iron your interfacing or whatever and then cut it out. This just happens to be how I had it. Now this is... Um, these are my sewing scissors, obviously, because I'm cutting fabric. You just don't want to um, use your fabric scissors on paper and things. It will dull them. And that is never a good sign. And I'm just cutting this out. It doesn't have to be perfect. The thing is, this is a fitted mask, so it's there's no pleats involved in this one. Now, if I wanted to make pockets, I would do the other type of mask. And then I will have to cut out the lining. I will not put fleece on the lining because I think that'll make it too bulky. And heck, this might. I haven't sewed it yet. So, that is what you want. Two pieces mirroring each other. And we're going to stitch them together is what we're gonna do. Now, if you're using any kind of fleece or um, any kind of interfacing, you wanna do all your pressing on the fabric side or get some type of a cloth. You don't wanna iron directly on fleece. So what I'm gonna do is cut out the lining to match this. I don't know what lining I'm gonna use, but I guess I don't know if these would be reversible. I guess they could be reversible. We'll have to sew one and see. I don't know that answer just yet. Um, but I have some of this. You're not going to be able to see it too much. It's quilter's fabric. It's just white on white. We're going to line this particular one with this fabric. And then once we determine if these are reversible, we could have some fun. Now, I'm wondering if I could get, oh yes, I'm going to cut four liners out of this because I can, again. And on this, it doesn't really, you know, make a difference where I stick my pins. I'm not piercing the, the fleece lining. Um, also, if you have like binder or um, quilters clips, which I do, I'll show you in a minute for the rest. But we need a liner. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. All right guys, here we go. So I have my piece cut out. I had to shift this all around. My table was wobbly. Right sides together. And then here is my liner. Right sides together. I drew on the wrong side the lines and I copied them from the pattern you're gonna sew on the right side, but I drew on the wrong side. And then on the other one, you just flip it over, or you could just measure and transfer, but somehow you need to transfer that mark that tells you where your elastic goes. Um, you can pin, clip, whatever you would like to do to hold these in place. I don't need to, <laughs> and there is my old buddy, Mr. Alex. And I'm trying to sew at an angle so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just lining up my needles in the center and I'm lining up at the edge of my foot. That's plenty of a seam allowance for me. And then we're just gonna sew around this curve. And back stitching to get it to hold in place. 
Now that's a nice seam allowance for this. It's about five eighths, I would say, if I had to guess, or three eighths, three eighths. I just kind of wing it, guys. You want to try to press open your seam allowances, at least on these edges, for the bulk. You can hand, you know, just hand it. Or you can take it to your sewing machine. The sewing machine, I don't have a ham, it's called, which is, it looks like a ham, but it, um, you iron over it. But look, I'm just pressing it with my fingers, and that's opening your seam. Just less bulk at the top, makes it look nicer, fit better. No, I'm not sick. I have very bad allergies this time of year. So there, and it's mostly here, but you can just go all the way down. You know, guys, we got nothing but time making these things. So there you go. I opened up my seam just with my fingers, and it will keep it laying flat. So that one is done. We're going to do the same to the front. Now, unfortunately, I probably won't be able to press these open with my fingers because of the fleece, but we'll see. And again, same step. Trim your excess threads. I'm a trimmer as I go because they drive me bonkers. Um, I might need to have to go to the sewing machine, but let's see if I can get this to press open nice and flat with my fingers. All right, I'm going to take this over to the ironing board and just give it a real quick from that side, from the right side. You don't want to ever iron on the fleece. I'm going to give it a quick press just to hold it open. All right. Not perfect, but this is not net master sewing here or quilt blocking. This is mask making. So I got them open enough. They'll lay flat. The next step is the elastic. I cut these into seven inch pieces like the pattern says, and we're going to attach them to this fabric here. You want to attach them on the right side of the fabric. So I need to transfer my line over because I drew the line on the um, wrong side. But I'm just, all I'm doing is looking through the fabric and transferring the line through. Um, when you do yours, you want to draw it on the right side of the fabric. And if you're using a dark fabric, use chalk. That easy. But I just transferred the line over. Um, and I just dropped my other elastic, so I'll go get it in a second. And then you're going to put this piece of elastic on the inside of that line. And then you're going to stitch it very, very securely. So you're going to go over it, back, over it again, right? Then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the same thing. But I want my elastic flat because that's how I am crazy. My crazy life, remember? All right. So there we go. And again. I know this is a lot of steps, but there's a lot of easy steps, and I think this one fits better than the pleated version. Over, back, and over. There you go. I'm going to trim up all my threads because, again, they make me nuts. And then um, I'm going to do the other side, and we'll be right back. Okay, elastic is in. Right? Now you want us to keep it on the inside. And what we're gonna do is sew our right sides together. So the first step that I'm doing is lining up my point at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and use my magic clippy thingies. Um, just to make sure everybody is where it needs to be. And then I'm gonna throw them across the room cause that's how I roll. All right. So here we go. Your elastic on the inside, like we said, right? So when you flip it, it will become on the outside. It's like magic. Ooh, ooh, it's magic. Um, the, okay, I won't sing. Nobody needs to hear that. The one thing you want to make sure is you leave at the bottom, like a three-inch opening to turn it, right? You need to be able to turn these things. So what I'm going to do is start here 
and go all the way around. And I'm sorry if I was off camera. These are my clips and they're just holding it together. They're pretty stable, which is nice. And the good thing here is we've sewn over the elastic once. We're going to sew over it twice and then we're going to top stitch it. And that'll be three times that that elastic is secured in this mask. So let's go. I'm just going to follow the outline of the pattern. Oops, not there. Three inches, Lori. I just said that, didn't I? Now, when I get to the end, I just bury my needle, lift it while the needle's still in there and turn. Going over that elastic. If you hear it resist, sometimes the elastic fights back a little bit. We try to avoid that, but it does happen. There you go. And then we're going to go up and around, and we're just following the contour here. Nothing crazy. And you're going to go nice and slow. I'm at the middle. Make sure your seams are flat. And if it's fighting you a little bit, remember we have a lot of layers, just kind of tug from behind, it's okay. Or push it, just don't get your finger in there. Get to my corner here. And this little knobby on this side, you can just walk your foot forward, nice and slow. All right, look at us, guys. We're almost done. Like, is that crazy easy or what? There's a couple steps left, but nothing that we can't handle. Okay, done. I've got the good fabric scissors out. So we're going to cut these corners, right? You just want some of this bulk out of here. And like, that's a pretty thick seam. So I'm going to trim it just a little bit. Nothing. Don't cut through where you sewed, for goodness sakes, because you'll just unravel everything you did. But just get close if you can. Clean them up a little bit. You don't want a lot of bulk. And then this top, I'm cutting that straight. Then what I'm going to do is snip it in this curve. You want to stop before you get to the stitching. So you're just doing a little tiny, and I'll show you. It's gonna help with the curve. You see, I just snipped it just a little tiny bit. And then, if you accidentally cut your thread, don't panic, don't throw it away. Before you turn it, go and restitch that seam. So if you accidentally nip that thread, it's fine sew over it again but see now when I turn it it has more movable movable movability elasticity I don't know guys let me get this off of me and now we have our tool it's our turning tool or you know what use a chopstick use your finger use a wooden spoon I'm just snip in here okay so that was the opening I left now watch the magic happen I'm thinking if you wanted to leave a filter hole, you would just not, you could hand sew these, but don't sew it together at the bottom. I'll show you in a second, but let's pop these corners out. Any little threads, don't pull them. You trim them. You never pull threads when you're sewing. So like I have this little thread right here, get your scissors and trim it. Pulling it will end up loosening or weakening your stitches potentially. I guess I should say could because I don't know what your stitching looks like, but, okay, there you go. Now, let's say you want to put a filter in it. I feel like you could iron that and just stitch that and that and leave the center open and you could put a filter up in there. Um, I'm not, I don't have a filter, first of all, and I don't know that I need a filter. I'm not, I'm just popping things out. So what we're going to do, I need to go to the ironing board. I'm going to iron it flat because we're going to top stitch all the way around this baby. And that's going to sure it up one more time. So give me a second. I'm just going to go iron. Okay. I went ahead and pressed it out and it just looks so much better even being pressed. 
but to keep everything from shifting we're going to do a nice i'll stitch trim that later we're going to do a nice top stitch i did use pins here the one benefit to pins over the magic clips is you can get to closer to a pin and stitch over it and this is my opening so i need to make sure that it's closed really well so we're going to start at the opening at the bottom and I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little smaller seam. So I'm just moving my needle to the right a little bit. You don't have to, but I just feel like with this, you don't want to sew over your pins, but you can get right up to it. Just watch your stitches, watch your needle. And when you start getting close to that pin, pull it. And the foot pressure is going to hold everything in place where you need it right and then I just took my last pin out I'm going to do a lot of layers here my sewing machine said girl what you doing you're gonna break me no I'm not it's just it's just the thickness and look one more time we're going over that elastic and that is only going to be more secure and in place now you're going to follow the the curve up here and I wish I could get you closer part of the noise you're hearing it's because my I'm on a plastic table and it's bouncing okay bury your needle and kind of give it that curve that it needs and anybody can do this guys if you have a sewing machine for sure you can do this now the hand sewing part might be a little intense but again, what do you got by time? And then just do a little back stitching when you get back to your stitcheroos. Now I'm gonna go around, find all my little, oops, I'm gonna go around and find all my little threads and trim them. And then I probably should brush my hair before you see me. <laughs> Uh, with my mask on but you will see me with my mask there you go guys it's finished how quick and easy was that now that we know how to do it I'm thinking it'll take me about after I cut them out it'll take me about 20 minutes to put a bunch together for some friends and family I hope you enjoyed all right here's the finished ones I've got a couple buckeye masks two of the flowery cute ones and then some I love New York now only one says I love New York this one just looks fun and this one has part of the Statue of Liberty and part of the Empire State Building on them so that my friends is the finished product I hope this was helpful and that you enjoy and I'll chat with you later bye